Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club fitter at Second Swing. Today it's a beautiful day out on the driving range. Uh, we're going to so show you guys how to hit a draw. Um, of course, Thomas, a professional golfer, uh, knows how to shape the ball both ways. And one of the most common uh, misses for golfers, at least that I've seen, is to the right, at least in my own experience for sure, is missing to the right with maybe a slice or a fade. And one way to combat that is to hit a draw. And so um, we're going to have Thomas show you a little bit how to do it. And maybe he'll show me as well how to uh, maybe mess with my alignment, my swing, to shape that ball from the right to the left. So Thomas, uh, you know, first I'll, I'll, give, I'll ask you a little bit of a synopsis on quick breakdown before we get really into the details. What uh, do you do to hit a draw? Yeah, so I think you're right. A higher percentage of golfers do slice the ball or fade the ball. Yeah as opposed to draw the ball. Yeah. It's just it's just a harder shot to hit. Um, so what I like to do is I really like to try and close my club path off a little bit, so f force myself to swing a little bit more in to out. Yeah. A lot of people may just want to just grab that grip and all of a sudden get that thing stronger. Yeah. And yes, you can generate curve that to the left way with a stronger grip. But if you don't change your club path, it's going to be a pull hook and it's going to be a small hook that's just going to yeah. start left and keep going left. A, a goal still is to hit the ball at the target. So yeah. we need to generate a little bit more of a start right out to the right and let that club face kind of turn over mm -hmm. to the left. So we have to change our club path first. Then you have to make sure your club face is still pretty square to the target. Um, if the club face follows that direction of your, of your, of your club path, it's just going to go to the right and stay to the right. Yeah. So you still have to get that club face to turn over. Right. There's a few things to look at here. Stance, where your shoulders are aligned. Of course, the path of your swing. And then maybe it's the grip as well that you mentioned. So uh, let's get into it here and see if we can turn the ball over, huh? All right. I like the challenge. <laughs> Pretty much right at the target. Yeah, it's pretty straight ball flight. Not a lot of curvature to it. So what we got here, you got a club path of 0 0.4. Yep. So that's pretty darn neutral, right? Face angle was minus 2.1, so just slightly close, slightly and that has close. it just yep. ever so slightly left of the target yep. um, via the shot tracer here. But um, I mean, that's a you know, if you're trying to hit a dead straight shot, you're just I don't know, probably my guess would be about 15 yards left of the pin. Yeah, so, so people that know me, like to, they know I like to play a slight little drawer with, with my iron. So this is seven iron. That thing had 11 feet, feet of curve to the left. So if I'm going to have to, if I want to hit a hook or a drawer or a stronger drawer, I need to get that club path and that face angle number further apart. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So now let's kind of see at least how you set up okay. to hit a draw and get those numbers farther apart. And then let's see how much curve you can put on the ball with the seven iron here. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. So first thing you need to do to hit a straight shot is you need to have your club face aimed at the target and then you need to have your feet to essentially be parallel to that target. Yeah. So our goal today right now is to hit a drawer. So I have to change some things around to be able to hit myself a drawer. So first thing we mentioned is I need to get the ball starting a little to the right because I don't yeah. want it to start left and go on left. So first thing I'm going to want to change is my alignment. So what I change right here is the direction where my feet are aimed. Not only is it my feet, it's kind of like my my shoulders, yeah, a little to the right, my hips to the right. So essentially to get there, I'm kind of just dropping this this right foot back a little okay. bit. Essentially, I still want the ball to kind of go to the left. So I'm not going to aim my club face way way over to the right. It's still going to be aimed. At pretty much at the target, mm -hmm. but I'm just kind of what I'm doing is I'm kind of closing my body off a little bit, and I'm giving myself a chance to swing a little bit more in to out. Yeah. When I do this, I got to make sure the hands release over. So I'm definitely kind of working on trying to get the club face to release over a little bit. Okay. But the fact that my club path is now going to the right and my club face is left of my club path, that should be enough to generate the draw. Okay. Okay, so you're the so when you're setting up your your club face is still facing at the target. Correct. Club face is still at the target. Right, your feet are just adjusting to 
uh, aim right of the target with your feet. Yep. And then that feet and body, yeah. shoulders as well. Everything now is aimed to the right, and I'm trying to swing down out to the wards the right here, okay. and then release that thing over while maintaining a square club face. Correct. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. Well, let's see it. Okay. Let's get rid of these. Club face aimed at the target. Aim my feet a little right, shoulders a little right, and then swing out towards the right. That was hit really well. It was, and there's the high draw. High draw, yep. So yeah. if you were gonna take a look at TrackMan numbers there, what you'll probably notice is my club path now is a little more positive or a little bit more to the right. Mm -hmm. And my face angle actually was dead square. Pretty close to the, yeah, pretty close to the target. Pretty much at zero there. Yep. And then, uh, you know, like what I've got here is your club path at 6.6. .6, so uh, that's, you know, you're obviously hitting that thing out to the right and then it did come back in with that spin that side spin that you generated uh, by, you know, having that face angle square or pretty much square at the target. Correct. It's because my club path is out to the right. Face, you know, angle was a zero point something. I think it was zero point six. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Um, and then my face to path is the difference between my club path, which was to the right, yeah. and my face angle, which was square. Right. Just kept generating that, that curve. Yeah, so your face to path actually on your stock swing was, uh, you know, on here minus two, two and a half. So okay. that was, a, I mean, that was a slight draw, which is your, na your natural swing. So that should have been expected. Yep. And then you increase it to minus six with you know, hitting the draw. And that's what generated that curve. Um, so we're talking about feet of curve. That's the draw swing was 95 feet of curve. Okay. And he had 14 here on the, the stock swing. So yeah. um, that is the quick one on one. I did, I did a draw there. That was it's pretty well executed. <laughs> yeah. So we essentially changed the curve from about 11 feet to about we said 95 feet. Yeah. So about 80 feet more curve, bust by changing my club path by swinging more out to it, to the right mm -hmm. by closing my body off a little bit. But my club face was still aimed at the target. And I was just getting the feeling of swinging out to the right and then turning yeah. over. Now, one thing too, I should we should note: Will the spin change at all? Like, if you're hitting it a draw, should the spin, the spin rate in general, backspin rate, should that be lower? Generally, if the ball is curving right to left, it will spin a little bit less than if it is yeah. curving left to right gotcha. or, or flying a little straighter. Okay. I know the first one I didn't catch perfectly pure. I don't know what the spin rate on the first shot was, but I. Feel like it was maybe about four or five hundred less when I curved the ball yeah. right to left. Yeah, you had five hundred lower RPM, fewer RPM um, with the draw. So Correct. that's why I was curious about is how the spin would affect and yep. given you know that's exactly what you said four to five hundred lower um, with the draw. So yeah, that's the pretty quick synopsis there. But I'm curious now to see the difference with the driver okay. because you know that's of course hitting a fade or a draw off the tee is one of the more uh, you know, you see that a lot too. And if a hole is a dog leg left, dog leg right, get it, shaping that ball to match the hole is important, and it helps with accuracy as well. So why don't we do that? We'll hit the draw. You know, we'll first get a stock driver swing, and then we'll see a draw with the driver. Sounds good. So this is this will be a little more challenging because the driver, my driver, only has nine degrees aloft on it. My seven iron has thirty-four degrees aloft on it. So any time a club has more loft on it, it is easier to turn over. Your ability to generate side spin on the ball is better with a 7 iron than with a driver okay. to, do, to do loft. Okay, so interesting. I'll have to, we'll see if I can generate a draw because that's going to be made a little more challenging with, with the driver. Okay. Yep. Okay, so my stock driver usually is fairly straight. It may have just a little bit of curve to the right. Okay. So we might be able to see a little bit of a difference here if I am able to turn that thing over. Right. <laughs> Was it solid? I was ripped. Did that clear the net? <laughs> I don't know, it might have. Yeah, so you're, first of all, 1 5 smash. Huh. Bonus. So, of course. <laughs> uh, your face angle, minus 0 0.3. So pretty much square at the target there. Uh, the club path was minus 3.8. So. so it's a little bit more kind of out in with, with, with the driver. It is harder to get into out with longer golf clubs. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so that is kind of what created that little bit of fade on that one. Yep. So 
Uh, so your face to path overall was 3.7. Yep, so it's just a little bit open. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, it's a lot harder to get that thing to match up with, with the driver. Right, yeah, exactly. And yep. you're, you're, the club's longer, you're swinging faster. It's just, I mean, to get, it would, it would take a, a complete robot to get 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.0, 0, .0. <laughs> uh, So, but with I that I gotta said, work on my game. <laughs> I mean, that, if you're not going to accept that drive, then can I have it? Because <laughs> anyway, um, now we're going to hit a draw. And okay. so these numbers should change you know, pretty dramatically, you'd think, right? Yeah. I, it, I, what we'll probably notice is will be the club path and the, the face to path number is probably what I'd pay attention to. OK. Yep. OK, so as I'm working on this right now, I'm trying to feel that feeling of like, like I'm swinging a little more in to out on my practice swings. Yeah. Just swinging more out that way and then curving the ball that way. Because I mentioned this is a harder shot for me. So are you, you're doing the same thing with your feet and your yep. shoulders So alignment. I'm going to aim a little more to the right. I'm going to try and get that thing to curve right to left on okay. me. Okay. Pulled it off. Yeah. That is a thing of beauty. That was hit really well, too. It was. And you jumped on it at yep. 113 club speed. That, Thomas, you just carried that 303. So, and I haven't seen that very much from you. So that's, I, I'm <laughs> glad that you did that for the video. Yeah, that was hit. That was probably, yeah, that was, you forced me to hit a draw there, and I, I pulled it off. It was really good. <laughs> Uh, looking at the numbers, club path minus 0 0.8, face angle minus 0 0.3, face to path 0 0.6. So it's not the biggest hook by any means, but it is a yep. draw. Yep. And as we see on the, uh, the shot tracer here, you did have that nice, beautiful draw there. So um, what now, does that, as someone, I mean, you said you kind of have been a tendency to hit that fade. Did that, does it, does it feel weird for you or is it, how'd that feel? It felt strange. I feel like I really had to work really, really, really hard to get my club path to be a little more in to out. I think I moved it by about three or four degrees in to out. It's still neg still showing negative, so it was negative 0 0.8. Yeah. It was still slightly left. Face angle was slightly left as well, mm -hmm. um, but I was able to get that thing just turn over just enough, mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that I'm, is... One thing I am curious, because just knowing the face to path number was pretty little is I am curious to see where I did hit that on the club face as well and see if gear effect maybe helped me out to get that thing to curve a little bit as well. Sure. Um, if you pull up the impact, right? impact location on the screen, I'm willing to bet yep. it probably wasn't on the heel. It is not. It is kind of up a little high of center and a little bit towards the toe. Yeah. So uh, that's which you know, that does help that ball turn over a little bit as well. But yep. um, So for a player like myself, when I do, like I mentioned, I do have a hard time to get that thing to kind of curve to the, to the left. Talking about kind of gear effect on, on, the, on the driver, by catching it slightly on the toe, it's going to get that club to kind of click, kick over just a little, yeah. bit, little, bit, little bit more there as well. Um, so you definitely kind of pay attention to your hit location as well to see where you're catching on the club face. Because if you... Uh, working really, really hard and getting that club face in the out, and you still catch it on the heel. Yeah. Gear effect essentially will take over and make it a little more challenging. Right. Absolutely. Yep. All right. So Thomas, I'm curious because I, you know, don't uh, hit a draw very well. Yep. So I was seeing a little bit of what you're doing. Now I'm going to set up for a stock shot here, and I kind of want to see how you would make the corrections on my setup and my swing, and then hopefully I can draw one over. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll jump in here and I'll show some alignment to help you get a little be able to generate a draw. So let's see you just kind of set up like you normally would. Yep. So at a normal stock shot, your club face would be aimed at the target, which it is. Mm -hmm. Your feet are parallel to the target, which it is. So from there, what we need to do is we still need that club face to be aimed towards the target, which is definitely kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to need to change is your feet and shoulder direction. So you want to feel like you're aimed a little bit more that direction. So I kind of want to turn so my feet So you want to like kind this. of turn your feet a little bit that direction. Um, not, as, I, not only is it the feet, but it's also your shoulders, mm -hmm. okay. kind of knees and everything along those lines. So now, yep. if you were going to then swing out towards the right. Yep. 
swing out towards the right and then just trust that that club face is going to turn over. Didn't do it. <laughs> so the good news on that one was your club path was into out. Yeah. So that's the first goal. We were able to get your club path in and out. You're normally a fader of the ball. Yep. So your club path right there was 3.6 degrees in and out. Your face angle stayed 5.4 degrees open. open. So when that happens, it's just going to kind of stay. It's going to be a little bit of a push, essentially. So what you're telling me is my face, my club face was still facing farther right than my swing path. And Correct. that created the fade. So I yep. need to close the club face and make sure it's still square to my target. Yes. Yep. So why don't we try that? So you still, so what you need, remember, you want your club face to be aimed at the target. Yep. But now close your body off a little bit more. Even drop that right foot back further. All right. There you go. And I'll swing out to the right. All right. That was better. That thing should have a little bit of right to left curve on it. No, it just kind of just hung in there. <laughs> your club path. By the way, it's very good. Oh, well, I exactly got that going for me. 3.8 and 3.8. So at least your club path is nice and consistent. You did get your face to path slightly to the left. So okay. you did have a little bit of curve. You had okay. 29 feet of curve on that one. Okay. But you still need to work a little bit harder to turn that club face over. Your grip is slightly kind of on the on the weaker side. Yeah. So what I would suggest, yes, turning exactly this, like this left turning hand that over top a little hand bit. a little bit more on top. Okay. Set up like you like I explained before, club face aimed at the target, drop that right foot back, drop the shoulders back, yep. and drop that foot back a little more. All right. right foot back even more. Even more. Yep. We're gonna really sling this. A little this one, stronger hopefully. grip. Yep. Alright, we're doing this. It's happening. And then trust it. Nice. Okay. So that one you were able to get going to the left. Club path was still in to out. But what happened there by getting that club face to turn over a little bit more is mm -hmm. you're able to generate a more negative face to path. So it's 6.3 degrees to the left. Yeah. So that's why you're able to get generate more curve on that one. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's something that, you know, it felt a little uncomfortable at first, but obviously after some practice and getting used to something like that, I could really use a draw for, you know, when that pins on the left side or there's, again, especially off the tee, if I were to hit, you know, get set up for a tee shot. You know, if there's a dog leg left, for example. So, yep. uh, but yeah, that was that was quick and easy. It's not, you know, it's something that I'll have to repeat on the driving range a little bit to get used to. But, you know, that's probably three to four steps in your setup, and your uh, maybe a little bit of your grip as well. Moving that left hand at least, and then for left-handed golfers, that right hand kind of over to the top. Um, just a few quick tips to help you curve that ball from right to left or hit that draw. All right, Thomas, you've got the numbers from our quick little test and, and well, I guess the test is part, part test, part instruction on how to hit a draw. Uh, we'll start with the seven iron that you hit, both the stock swing and then also your draw swing. What do the numbers suggest of, um, what does Trackman tell us for how to hit a draw? So, first thing I kind of mentioned is your club path, your face angle, your face to path, they all need to be larger numbers to generate curve, whether that be right to left or left to right. Yep. So when I hit my stock 7-iron, my club path was 0 0.4. So in TrackMan terminology, that means 0 0.4 degrees to the right or slightly in to out. Yep. So positive numbers mean to the right. Uh, my face angle was 2 degrees closed at, at impact, so I generated a face-to-path number of 2.5, which led to curve of 14 feet to the left. So when I'm playing on the golf course, I'm typically trying to hit an ever so slight draw or a pretty straight golf shot yeah. with my with my seven iron. I like to have a slight in to out swing and generate just a little bit of curve to the left. Yep. Um, then we explained how to hit a draw. So I changed my alignment, yep. my shoulders, my feet were a little more to the right. I could have a club face still aimed at the target. What changed is I went from 0 0.4 degrees with my club path to 6.6 .6 degrees. So essentially 6.2 degrees further to the right. Yep. Um, if we take a look at my face angle, my face angle actually was 0 0.6 degrees to the right of the target. So basically pretty square to the target. But what changed was the face to path number doubled. So I went from negative 2.5 to negative 5.9. That is that that the difference in the larger numbers that yeah. I called about was going to generate more curve. So I went from 15 feet of curve 
to when I tried to hit that seven iron draw, 94 feet of curve. Mm -hmm. um, looking at your seven iron, same exact thing. I got you to set up like you were trying to hit a little bit of a draw, so dropping that right foot back a little yep. bit. We're able to get your club path into out three and a half degrees. I know I've, I know you'd like to play a little bit of fade, or you play a little bit of fade yeah. normally. So we noticed that we're able to get the ball to curve on average 10 feet to the left, which is good, mm -hmm. which, is, it's, which is definitely a start. Yeah. But you just had to work a little bit harder to trust that that club face is going to turn over. Yeah. So the last thing I added in there with you was grip. So I added you to get that grip a little bit more on top to turn it over just yeah. a little bit more. Right. Yep. So yeah, I think the thing for me is just would be getting comfortable with it. You know, just doing that more on the driving range when I get on the course, uh, maybe committing to something like that a little bit more often um, when the situation presents itself. Which, again, I think a pin on the left side of the green maybe you want to get it close, but um, you know don't want to take that fade right where you would maybe have to land it off the green to get it close. Something like that, or of course off the tee, which we'll touch on a little yeah. bit here as well. But off the tee, you know, if there's a dog leg to the left, you know. You want to maybe shape that ball right to left to match what the hole looks like. Uh, I would have to commit to that, and then of course on the range, it just, it just feels a little different because I'm so used to hitting the left to right ball. Yeah. But um, I mean, it clearly worked, right? I hit three swings, and pretty soon I was hitting a big, high draw there. So, and then with driver, it's a little different because uh, I know you have a tiny fade lately, at least with the driver. And so getting it to curve over was a little bit tougher for you, but it did work. It definitely did. So my stock driver number was pretty solid. I carried 291 going 315. First driver swing of the day. I was pretty happy <laughs> with that. Uh, but you'll notice, the first thing you'll notice is my club path number, negative 3.8. It's the reason why I've been having a little bit of a hard time recently with my driver and leaving it up to the right. Yeah. It's because I have started to generate just a little bit of that over the top move, I guess, yeah. slightly left with the, with the club path. Um, my face angle was basically dead square to the target. Um, but because I was literally got a little bit over the top move with that face angle being open to the path, it's going to curve a little mm -hmm. to, to the right there too. So that stock shot that I hit with the driver had 31 feet of curve to the right. Okay. Then I really exaggerated with the driver. It was really hard work for me to do it. I was rehearsing in my practice swing that feeling of yeah. you know, swinging out to the right, turning it over. Um, I was able to then switch my face to path with the driver still slightly to the right but 0 0.6 degrees so it was further to the left which is going to generate cur more curve that direction the big thing that helped me is gear effect okay yeah so we, we forget about where you hit on the club face and how important it is mm -hmm. when i asked you to pull it up just kind of check was that slightly on the toe it was slightly on the toe there as well yep. so that really helped especially with the driver when there's not much loft on that thing to get that thing to kind of kick over there to the left there as well. As I mentioned I work really hard. Basically would have hit a dead straight shot if I had hit that thing in the middle of the club face, but yeah. because I got slightly toey, it did go a little bit to the yeah. left for me as well. Yeah, because all of your numbers on the draw swing were close to zero, if I remember correctly. Yep. Uh, there was a little bit of, the num numbers would slightly indicate maybe a draw, but then your location on the club face did, uh, with that toe location, kind of turn that club face slightly and created that draw. But um, so, so for the golfers at home, uh, you know, if you're like me and sometimes struggle with that left to right ball and maybe want to get out of that or maybe have a shot on command in your bag where you can uh, shape it the other way, these are some quick tips for you. Uh, it starts with your stance and where your shoulders are aligned as well. And then of course you got to make sure your club face is still aimed at the target, right? But then you kind of swing along the plane of where your feet and shoulder are aimed and that should create that nice draw for you. Uh, we saw it with the seven iron, we saw it with the driver as well. So, uh, Thomas, thanks for bringing your expertise to the driving range today and showing us how it's done. Yeah, not a problem.